So here's finally an example of a shift reduce parser at work, given the grammar I have for you and the input string. And I want to focus your attention on the shift and parse conditions. In shift, I'll further label that with an S. I have two possible outcomes or two possible conditions I want to look for. First is that the look ahead has an already partial grammar match, and then we'll wait for more and we'll shift and move on. Or it's a combination of the look ahead and the rightmost in the parse stack. So any of those two combinations means I'm going to shift. If there's absolutely no match for the look ahead, I go ahead and reduce the rightmost symbol in the parse stack, and we want to find the largest match out of all that. And I'll explain this further in the example. So in step number zero, we have an empty parse stack. Our look ahead is an ID. Uh, the unscanned portion is just the rest of it. And it's just a start. So we're going to move on from there. In step number one, we have gone ahead and shifted the ID to the parse stack. Our next look ahead is the equal sign. So because the ID and equal sign they have a combination here. I'm doing a shift and version B. It's the combination of the look ahead and the rightmost. Has a partial match to, well, the first one, a sign, which is ID equals, and we haven't gotten to sums yet, so it's going to wait. It's going to shift, and the parser again wants to make the biggest match. So we're going to wait for the next one. In step number two, you'll notice the parse stack has grown, and our look ahead is the ID. Now, this time we have a shift and version A. Now, notice I'm looking at A before B, so there is kind of a priority here, but you'll, it'll be one or the other. Where ID itself is, again, a partial match to both a sign and value. So, again, that's why we're going to shift. Again, notice I'm not looking at the par stack at all. I'm just looking at the look-ahead symbol. And, again, wants to be lazy. It's waiting for the rest of it to see if there's a bigger match. So we're going to shift one more time and again we use case A in this version to make sure we have our shift. In step number three, I have shifted the ID onto the par stack. Our look ahead is a plus sign. Now, just looking at the plus sign, there is no match for just the plus sign. You notice in the grammar, it's either ID, sums, product, it's the first token in that production. So we're going to do a reduction from the rightmost symbol in the par stack, which is ID, and we're going to change that to value. So ID who has now become value, at least the second ID. We still have the look ahead plus, so we're still going to do a reduction from value then to products. Well, and from Still same scenario here. We're still going to do a parse and reduce products to sum. Now here's where our parsing ends because now we have sums in our parse stack, the rightmost symbol, and we have a look ahead of plus. Now those two match. If you look at one production of just sums, sums plus products, now we're actually going to shift to see if we have more to add to that grammar. And notice that we are matching with shift and B, the combination of look ahead and a rightmost has a partial match. So we'll move on to step number seven. In step number seven, here we've added the addition sign to the parse stack, but looking only at our look ahead, it's an ID again, and that would suffice for shift A, the look ahead has a partial match again with ID. So notice the parse stack is really starting to climb in values here. So we'll continue. In step eight, I've gone and shifted the ID to the parse stack. Our look ahead is a multiplication symbol. Now again, specifically looking at the look ahead, we have a multiplication symbol. There's no match for this, so we're going to go ahead and start reducing what's on the parse stack, the rightmost one, which is sadly just ID. And we're going to reduce ID to value. Then ID from value now to Products will be next. We're doing another parse and reduce re to where we finally have something of interesting. We have ID equals sum plus product. 
Now, again, I'm not really looking at that part first. I'm looking at the look ahead, which is the multiplication sign. But this time, we do have a partial match with the look ahead and the rightmost side of the part stack, which is products and then multiplication. That looks like line number four in the grammar of products times value. So we're going to shift to see if we can match that production before we do any reduction. In step 11, we still have our par stack of sums plus products and the multiplication symbol. I am specifically looking at our look ahead, which is an int that does have a match. So that's going to be shift of A. Look ahead has a partial match. We're going to wait for more. So notice I've put on int into the par stack. Now our look ahead is finally the last symbol, and this is why I put that in there, because basically from here on out, our look ahead is not going to match anything in the grammar. There's no dollar sign in there. So from here on out, we're going to be doing a lot of reductions or parsing. So in step number 12, we're going to reduce the rightmost portion, because again, I, I can't get any further than that, of int to value. Then value can further reduce to products. In step number 13, it actually gets a little bit more interesting. Again, the look ahead's dead. We're, we're not going to be able to do any more shifting. So let's look at the parse. This time we have a bigger parse or reduction that we can do because if you look again, the rightmost side I'm trying to fit the most, I do have products times value both in the grammar and in the parse stack. So I'm going to reduce that whole thing two products. Now we have, again, same idea. We have some plus products. That also matches somewhere in the grammar where I can reduce that all the way down to sums. In step number 15, my par stack is i equal sums. Well, I'll be darned. It matches part of the grammar where we will further reduce that to a sign. And in step number 16, since we've reduced it all the way down to a sign, we have a look ahead symbol of nothing left. That is accepted. As long as we have the start symbol of the grammar, we are good to go. And by the way, a look ahead, that is a dollar sign.